All right, guys, just want to talk about family life in the Philippines today. A lot of people overlook it. A lot of guys go there for retirement and end up meeting somebody and then having kids. Um, best advice on this is be very, very wary. Because um, a lot of guys don't even look further than today. So because they retired on planning, they're on the roll down and just chill out. But you've got to remember, when you made that decision, you're probably looking at maybe a maximum of 20 years in your lifeline, in the sense that that's what you planned. So when you have kids and stuff, there can be things affected because of that. Um, so you need to be able to plan ahead, but also it can change the whole dynamic of your retirement in the sense that a lot of people then leave the Philippines. Because once they, they're like, well, what happens happens sometimes. And then after a couple of years, they start and think, I'm going to have to take the kids back to America. I'm going to have to take the kids back to the UK. I'm going to have to, because they're looking a bit further along. I mean, if it, the, a lot of the expats that have done what I've done, um, which is move back to the West, is because of the children. You know, it's not because of me, it's not because of my wife, because me and my wife could actually commute and go on holiday anyway. But it's because of the kids, because the education of the kids is, is paramount. Um, at the end of the day, I, I've met enough expats and seen enough die in the Philippines to know how quickly things can spiral out of control. And one of the big, big problems I, I've seen on this is a lot of the women do not engage enough on financial management. They, there's no financial planning there. They're just like, the guy will take care of everything. Yes, today, but when he's dead, then what? The, in some cases, the family come around the house like a plague of locusts and start eating away at the money very quickly. They end up selling the house if they can sell it, and they sell it for less than they paid for it. And within a year, there is no money. They're back up in a nipper hut or something somewhere, uh, rather than focusing on they're in a good position now, shore it up. How do you move forward from here? Um, some of this is where widow's pensions can come in and I'm not aware of how the UK or US system works on that um, but it is something you guys may be worth looking into um, so that you've got something that can be passed on in in your event of your demise um, but also be, be aware that not all women are marriage material <laughs> but um, we've already covered that more than once um, but if you've got kids it's good to set them up in an environment that will let them move forward. Um, and this is one of the reasons that moving to the West could be quite useful. Because once the kids, like here, you know, people have asked me already, well, well what happens with Brexit? Nothing. Brexit ain't going to affect me in, in the slightest. But my kids and April will be Spanish soon. They'll have um, Spanish, Filipino set up. So they'll be quite content here in the sense that they're in the foot of Europe. They've got countries all around them, multilingual. They speak language, uh, English and Spanish, which in this area alone, worst case scenario, you become a real estate agent. <laughs> but ultimately, there's also some other things culturally. The same with the Philippines. You need to have people that will drive you forward. And this is another important thing a lot of people overlook. Because here in Spain, a lot of people bring up that over a certain age, they have, What's that? The under 25s have a high unemployment rate, uh, age. UK has as well. The, the problem you've got here, and even the education minister brought it up, is the parents are the problem. The parents aren't pushing their kids. And a friend of mine's currently doing a criminal side to, uh, criminal, what's it? It's a criminal course. Um, Psychology, yeah, criminal psychology up at um, a university, and she's saying the the problem you've got is it's just pass is good enough, and that's the way they're being taught. The lecturers are teaching that way, and that's the way the students are operating. It's not about being the best. It's not about being perfect. It's not about being the highest in your class. It's like it'll do. Well, with that mentality, there's nothing driving you. You're not driven by interest, you're not driven by wanting to be the best, you're just turning up because you, your parents told you how to go to college or whatever. I cannot understand the logic behind that, but that is one of the fundamental issues here. I've seen the same in the Philippines with some of the kids, they get into 
a comfortable lifestyle. I mean, and there was somebody I know, I, I'm not even going to mention the family name, but the, he had a basketball scholarship that will take him all the way to the top, and yet he decided he didn't want to do it. His, you know, his, parent, his parents couldn't fund his education, but he'd already been picked up by Gulas, Gulas University, and he just didn't show up. I'm not being funny. There's very few opportunities in the Philippines for, for most people. Yeah, a guy had it on a plate and yet just decided it wasn't for him. And what's he doing now? Hanging around his parents' house. And a lot of that is the mentality that often gets ingrained. You know, there's not enough of the child-beating Chinese scenario where the mother's sitting there making them uh, improve their grades. But at the same time, it doesn't mean it doesn't go on. I'm just saying there's a lot of time there's too lax in the Philippines. Um, so one of the things I do recommend is getting on top of that. And the kids should always be trying to get the best grades. It's the same as um, one of April's cousins, well, two of them. They're, they're both set up for life now because they, they've got good education. And it comes from the fact that they, they weren't in the top three of their class. Their mother would sit there all night for about two weeks until they got up to the top three. That was it. So if you wanted to go out and play with your friends and stuff, you stay in that top three. If you don't, every night is revision night until you bring your grade up. And that's why they're doing good. I mean, um, their father's the same. He's doing well for himself. And it's come from commitment and getting into that. You've got to do this. If you want to get on in life, you need to do this. Because I know it's like in the West. A lot of time it's like, we get told, oh, yeah, work hard early on, enjoy it later. And most people are like, yeah, whatever. <laughs> but I do think it's important, especially in the Philippines, there is no safety net there. And although people may have parents, whatever, which is what I mentioned earlier, at some point they ain't going to be there. What you're actually doing is probably going to be on a tier where your brother and sisters have got kids as well. So even that bit of financial stability gets watered down again. So you're actually bringing your whole family down further into poverty instead of trying to lift the family out. Um, so my personal view on it, if you're an expat and you do end up with kids, and I know a lot of guys go, I ain't going to have kids. A lot of guys end up with kids whether they, they like it or not. Um, I mentioned the, the guy before where the doctor was selling his wife placebos um, as, as birth control. And then when he tried to find the doctor, suddenly they couldn't find the doctor. No longer works here, sir. Um, but the point being is pre-planning, recognizing that you have a commitment to make make a difference. Because otherwise you're locking, locking somebody else into poverty from your mistakes. And I mean, I'm not saying everybody's been, but a lot of guys will go, well, I didn't plan it, it's not my fault. But of course it's your fault. You're responsible for that. Um, but at the same time, it's recognizing, is to take responsibility and make things work in the sense that set them up for a future, don't set them up for a fall. And that's, that's an important thing for me. There's enough kids out there, I think that around Clark Air Base, there's about 10,000 kids that are from ex servicemen. Um, and I know a lot of guys will say, oh, it's the women's fault, whatever. It's very easy to dismiss things, but it's much harder to be responsible in the sense that if you did it, it's your fault. It doesn't matter how you look at it or whatever, you're, you're part and parcel of this scenario. Um, the important bit is actually taking responsibility for it and moving things forward. Thanks for watching.